afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. One of the most memorable gifts you can give this holiday season is the gift of reading. And one of the best sources for a good read is your local library. For today's program, I'm joined by two Vermont librarians. They're going to review more than a dozen books. At the end of our show, I'll let you know how you can get a list of all the books that we've highlighted. It is a pleasure to welcome a longtime contributor to Across the Fence, Amy Howlett. Amy is with the Vermont Department of Libraries in Bellows Falls. Also with us is Jennifer Murray. Jennifer is the director of the South Burlington Community Library. Well, thanks to both of you for coming in. We're going to start with some books for pre-readers and young readers and then progress to recommendations for adults. So, Amy, you have our first book. Great. So, I want to start with I'm My Own Dog. Um, I love this book, and I love, as an adult, finding a book that I can really relate to when I'm reading to a little kid. So, the idea of I'm My Own Dog is about independence. I throw my own bone. I pick up my own <laughs> slippers. I scratch my own back. No, I can't scratch my own back. You need a pet for that. So the dog actually finds a pet, a very nice young man in a, in a tie, who will scratch his back and take him to the park. Um, I'm My Own Dog is great for preschoolers and toddlers, and it'll give you a good laugh and start out your holidays with a great feeling. I just so. love the illustrations, too. They're yeah. so cute. Warm. Really yeah. warm. Very yep. good. Yep. Well, um, there's a dog in my book. Um, the book that I'm recommending is Bug in a Vacuum by Melanie Watt. And um, the, this dog is sitting mournfully next to a vacuum cleaner, which has just eaten his favorite chew toy. Um, and inside the vacuum is a bug which has just lost its freedom. The pictures are, um, are funny. And the text is funny, so it's a great picture book on that level. But at the same time, the author includes the five steps of grief. So it's a great uh, discussion tool for adults to talk to kids about loss, the loss of a blanket at the mall or the loss of a pet. I wish I'd had this book when my son was young. So that's a bug in a vacuum. That's great. So I brought um, Emmanuel's Dream. Um by Lori, uh, Lori Ann Thompson, lost the title there for a minute. Um, also a book with a little bit of a message, but a, a really profound one. And the, the message, I'll just give it to you, is people with disabilities can change the world. So this is the story of an African boy born in Ghana with one strong leg and one weak leg. His mother brings him up, carries him as long as she can, and after that he hops. He hops two miles to school and two miles home. Wow. And as a young man, he writes to an American foundation for a bicycle, and he takes on the idea of cycling across Ghana and wearing a T-shirt that proclaims he's somebody with a disability, and he believes that you can do you can do almost anything. So I love the fact also that Emmanuel has a Christmas message, God is with us. That won't resonate with everyone. But what a special book. True yeah. story. Um, That's amazing. Eman Emmanuel by... Uh, Emmanuel's Dream by uh, Laurie Ann Thompson. Uh, I also have Harry Potter, um, and I didn't bring the book, so I'm a little bit flummoxed here. Mm. I think we're at the point now where Harry Potter is a children's classic. You remember the excitement when it came out, but we have a new generation of kids, and I think this is a great time to give them a book of their own. So talk to your librarian or your independent bookseller about whether your child is ready for Harry Potter, um, but bring it in and read it out loud. It's a magical fantasy, a boarding house, three strong friends. Harry and Hermione and Ron, and all of the things that happen in books one and all of the following. I love the fun of a series book because you know that you're going to see the characters again, you're comfortable in the area, um, and you'll see them develop as they go on and, of course, in this fantasy, fight against the greatest evil of all the impossible Voldemort. But I think it's also great to have the book and not just the movie and the right. current, current stuff. Yeah. So, Well, I've got another fantasy book. It's um, by Bruce Coville. It's called Diary of a Mad Brownie. <laughs> uh, and Bruce Coville is known for uh, books a while back called uh, My, Teacher's a My Teacher is an Alien. Mm -hmm. And so now he's moved into brownies. And uh, a brownie, is their, their role is to keep things orderly and they are attached to a particular person for their whole lives until that person dies and uh, hands them off to someone else. And our, the brownie is uh, named Angus. He's in Scotland. 
and his person dies, and her next of kin is a 10-year-old girl in the U.S. who is the messiest girl in town. But brownies like to organize things. That's what his job is, <laughs> exactly. So he ha he's got a big job ahead of him. Um, so I, I recommend Diary of a Mad Brownie. Um, and then I've got to transition to something that's a little more difficult. Um, uh, I read uh, Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy, and uh, there are many stories in this book. Uh, the primary one is about Walter, a black man in a small southern town who um, spends a Saturday at a fish fry with his family and his neighbors, and they're all having a wonderful time uh, until he's arrested for the murder of a white woman across town. Uh, everyone vouches for him, says that he was there the whole time, but the prosecutor wants a quick, uh, wants a quick arrest, uh, over, and the judge overlooks some sketchy uh, evidence, and he's put on death row, and he's there for eight years. Um, Brian Stevenson is a young lawyer, and he um, is, dedicates his life to getting uh, people off of death row that don't belong there. And this book is um, heart-wrenching uh, when you hear the stories of, of the people who've been wrongly accused, their families, but it's also incredibly full of hope uh, and redemption. Uh, it's, a, it's a fabulous book for the humanitarian on your gift list or the activist mm -hmm. um, that uh -huh. you're shopping for. That sounds wonderful. Um, so I'd like to move on to more nonfiction because we do have a readership for that. Um, so my next book is Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. Um, she's a New, uh, New Hampshire naturalist. Um, your children might even have heard her in school. And she loves getting close to nature in a way that most of us never do. So this is the story of a number of encounters with the octopuses in the New England Aquarium. Uh -huh. And uh, it's an other world. I mean, these are animals <laughs> whose blood is blue. They carry copper, but they are intelligent, a very different kind of intelligence than we have, but wonderful sense of freshness and amazing touch. There's also a book for children, The Octopus Scientists, and kids do love the scary. So if not soul of an octopus, think about the octopus sciences. But this is another one that I think would make a great read aloud. The pieces are short enough so you could enjoy that while you're learning about this crazy animal. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Well, um, I have yet another nonfiction. Uh, this one is by Jack Mitchell. It's called Hug Your Customers. And it's a motivational book, great for the new entrepreneur or for uh, somebody that's trying to revitalize their business. Some of it's just common sense uh, customer service, but he writes it in a way that really makes you want to reach out to your customers, get to know them better, and um, give them that big hug that's going to make them feel important at your at your business. Uh, I have, uh, it's been in my mind since I read it, so I find myself saying yes more often than I say no, nice. um, having read that book. And um, I'll be, uh, I've recommended it to my brother who's starting a business in Connecticut, so I, I thought it was great. Literally on your holiday uh -huh. gift giving list. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So um, I want to make sure we include some good fiction. So I have uh, Last Bus to Wisdom by Ivan Doig. I've loved Ivan Doig's brilliant novels for a number of years, and this one is just as good. It's his last. He died last spring. Um, takes place in the 50s, and it starts with an 11 year old orphan who grew up on a Montana ranch being shipped on the dog bus. Greyhound east to Buffalo to um, live with his impossible Aunt Kate and his Uncle Herman. And she decides he's too much for her and she ships him back knowing that he's going to end up in a foster home in Montana. And his uncle, in name, decides he's not going to have it. So he leaves the impossible Aunt Kate and goes with the boy. And what an adventure oh. they have. So the 50s, canasta, green stamps, putting them in the books, the excitement about the world of the Indians, you know, mm -hmm. um, but a very real excitement of finding the West and showing Uncle Herman what it's really like out West. So the Crow Nation and hobos and haying, wonderful, wonderful details, brilliant brilliant, effective writing, so, Ivan Doig. So it sounds like the kind of story where you think it's going in one direction and it totally turns yep. on you. Yep, yep. But I, I think what makes it 
its real strength is in the level of personality and detail. So, you know, the the memory book, the boy has an autograph book. Do you remember these? Maybe yes. that's just yes. my time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, you get someone to write, and one of the people he meets on the bus in this novel is Jack Kerouac. Oh, that's who, fun. Who, who, who writes a piece. So, just fabulous details. Terrific. Sounds great. Well, um, so interestingly enough, uh, Lost Lake by Sarah Addison Allen is also, yeah, she, she writes family stories. Um, often it's um, creating family from your friends or mm -hmm. finding family that you've lost. And in this one, um, it's finding family that um, the main character's lost. She goes back to uh, a summer camp on a lake in Georgia. Uh, it's supposed to be the last year of the camp, so um, there are people there who've been going for decades. And they kind of create their own family for this summer. And um, I enjoy her work because it's got a little bit of magical realism mm -hmm. in it and um, always a little romance. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful read for just curling up by the fire or mm -hmm. taking to the beach, light and, and uh, a pleasant, pleasant read, yeah. Lost Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Classic female fiction. Mm -hmm. well, I guess it would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I brought The Wright Brothers uh, by David McCullough. Um, because it's so American, uh, the story of the two men from Ohio, uh, one of them really a genius, Wilbur, um, and then his brother Orville, always worked together, worked long hours, um, built bicycles and created a bicycle business, and then, of course, invented motored flight. So it actually started, I think, because Wilbur had his teeth knocked out in high school and was home <laughs> for months recovering oh, oh, yeah. with nothing to do but read. And he discovered this amazing world of science and aeronautics. And that germ of an idea um, brought them to the Carolinas and their effort to get off the ground, literally, with that amazing first flight. Fabulous lives and truly an American story. Exactly. And while we most right? of us know some of the, the history about mm -hmm. it, they don't know the background, the, the backstory. Story. Right. right. Yeah. Do I have time for one more? You do. You have time for two more, I think. Uh, I think, um, yeah, so I have been reading the mystery author Deborah Crombie. She writes, uh, she's British, and she writes kind of a cozy uh, mystery series. And um, I just finished Necessary as Blood, which is number 13 in her series with Gemma James and Duncan Kincaid. And this particular one, um, you know, in a series, some of them are better than others, and this is a particularly good one. Uh, and it's dealing with issues of human trafficking, kidnapping, drugs. Um, one of the reasons I really like this series uh, is because the two characters fall in love early on in the in the um, series. And so you have the dire nature of the mystery and solving that. And then you have a backdrop of what's happening in their personal lives, which in this particular book is, uh, are they going to get married or aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, the um, And for readers who have gotten further along, the latest in the series is number 18. And that's To Dwell in Darkness, which um, I'm looking forward to, but I'm just not there yet. And so do you have to read all of the books, or can you pick one and, and enjoy that? I think you can enjoy them uh, out of order. If you want to see the relationship that develops between them and their kids, then it's fun to read it from the very beginning. And okay. mystery fiction, that's got to be one of our biggest genres. People still love a good mystery. They're huge at the library. Yep. Yep. Well, my pick was American Sniper, the autobiography of the most lethal sniper in U.S. military history by Chris Kyle yeah. with uh, Scott McEwen and Jim DeFelice. I was really surprised, first of all, that I would like this book. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised how it affected me and stayed with me. It's a very powerful story. I know a lot of people have probably seen the movie. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Um, reading the book was powerful enough for me. And it just g gives you a glimpse inside a world that you know nothing about mm -hmm. and, and the emotional impact that has on the individuals, not only um, serving in the military, but also their families as well yeah. and, and what they have to deal with. And I, I really think, uh, I was talking to my husband about this, that, that this should be required reading for every high school senior. I think, huh. yeah, I think it's that powerful. I think it gives you kind of a slice of life that you have no 
inkling of what it's about. So uh -huh. I think it's a, it was just really a powerful book. I enjoyed it a lot. My well, son's 21. Maybe he, that would be a good choice for him for the holidays? I think so. I think it would be, it's, it's a good read. I mean, it's very easy to read. So okay. and a great travel book. I was reading it while I was traveling. Well, to get a list of all the books that we reviewed this afternoon, you can write to the Vermont Department of Libraries at 109 State Street in Montpelier, 05609. If you prefer, you can call the department. That phone number is 802-828-3261. And we'll also be sharing the book list on Across the Fences website and Facebook. I want to thank you both for joining me today. That's our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.